Good afternoon from Yami B TV. Wishing you all well today. Having a lot of questions uh, about can you keep your red down in a prison environment? Um, the answer is yes and no. Uh, these are the reasons why I feel the risk factors are higher for some and lower for some. But we know that it's a hostile environment built up mainly on other people's energies as well. Uh, my first thing is, is that for the plus side of it all, uh, it is possible to minimise the risk of not getting into trouble in there while you're in there. Um, I say, you know, keeping yourself busy, um, the job you've got as well, depending, you know, if it's the workshop, say, uh, you know, you have to go to work with a lot of other people, which obviously can bring about risk in itself to violence, to arguments, you know, to predators, to the pick honors and that kind of stuff. But if you get a decent job, like a, a isolated job, maybe if you're a cleaner on the wing, maybe you work in a library, maybe you're an orderly, an orderly meaning, you know, you work in like a kitchen, you know, um, on the wing with staff, like a personal job, like I used to have, like re teaching people how to read and write, those kind of jobs are a bit more isolated and also they will limit the risk of getting into trouble. The other thing was, I was going to say to you, depending on how you've lived your life of crime outside. Not, not to say that, you know, uh, we're saying, you know, keep to doing low crime, a very lonesome crime on your own. And my stuff a lot of the time was on my own. But again, it didn't work out for me due to my history and the way that I thought about prison in itself, uh, which was the wrong way uh, to think about things. But depending on your status outside, say, for instance, if you're in gangs already and getting into a whole lot of trouble uh, that involves other people, um, you know the chances when you come back to prison, you're going to have to look over your shoulder a little bit more. Rather than say a man that gets who commits crime by himself, you know, depending on the level, of course, mind you, it doesn't really matter about the level because you can still uh, do robberies on your own and that kind of stuff on your own. But what I'm really saying is when you're not working in groups outside and groups of criminals where there's a lot of people involved in the crimes that you're doing, uh, you come kind of with a clean slate from the outside where you haven't got many enemies from the outside uh, because of your criminal activities, which means when you come to prison, you won't have to look over your shoulder that bad. Uh, you know, for you lot that are in gangs, it's going to be very, very harder for you, uh, which I've seen firsthand. And, you know, to keep yourself safe and to concentrate on your rehabilitation in prison uh, with studying and things like that. The fear that you're always going to have to be involved in violence of some kind uh, is always going to be there or about for you. Not saying that um, you come to prison on your own uh, without those outside um, influences or antagonisms for when, you know, for that life that comes from there to in there. But it limits the risk, but also... You know, there's no uh, magic wand for it because one bad day that you have in there uh, by way of keeping into your family, somebody else, you know, upsetting you and, you know, or picking on you can still happen. So what we're talking about is the minimising of risk from, you know, the outside uh, by way of crimes and gangs and groups, that kind of stuff. So nothing is ever foolproof. We also find as well that when you're in there, don't get involved in a drug culture. Don't get involved with mobile phones. Don't get involved in he said and they said. Easier ways to keep your head down by keeping it short and sweet. Hello, good. In saying that, I want on an extreme level, I once saw a man keep his head down and was very, very respectable and honest to everyone. And one little thing with one uh, moment that wasn't nothing to do with him. Uh, somebody got the, the name wrong. Something was delivered to the wrong man and he ended up dying that's the extreme case the smaller things you know like during day-to-day -day life in there um anything involving illegal contraband or drug culture or gang culture in prison uh makes it uh, harder for you uh, to stop yourself from getting hurt and getting on with your time and getting back to your families if you have them 
or learning more about yourself and creating skills for the future for when you come out. It gives you much more peace of mind. I found that I couldn't really spend a lot of time studying in the last 20 years of those institutionalization things or even a bit longer, really. My trouble started uh, uh, um, way, way early uh, with that prison thing. And it can make you uneasy during the day when you've got loads of skeletons in the closet from outside, from inside, the things you've done inside. You know, when you sit down to study in the classroom or you want to go back to yourself, where where uh, I probably excelled a bit more on my own in the cell with my reading and writing and those kind of things because there's nothing uh, that can get into that cell to disturb you at that time. But for a man like me, it was very difficult to go to education and go to things without looking over your shoulder even when I used to go to the gym. You know, you'd have to worry about who was coming and who you're going to see. Very, very hostile environment. Do I believe that, you know, you can stay out of trouble in there? No. I think you can minimise it and do the best you can with what you got. I'm saying to you to still try and get your, your head down in there if you have to go in there or you're, you've got loved ones in there and you want to try and give them some kind of insight into my experiences is that the main risk factors are the ones that I've named already. You take that all away, you keep your head down, you're polite to all, or you don't have to say hello. Some men don't. Some men go to prison and don't even look at anybody in the mornings and say good morning. So, you know, that, that's not a must either to keep yourself safe. But like I said, you're living on everybody's emotions while you're in there. Uh, you only need one bad day uh, from somebody else's stuff and it could affect you. You know, you've got a lot of things that affect the day-to-day -day running of the regime in there. You know, like when there's fights, when it's time to go to work, when it's time to get to appointments and those things there. But if the alarm bell goes off somewhere and you're, you're, you know, it can delay things for the day, which can cause upset to even more on that scale as well. So nothing runs smoothly in there. And yes, um, it does minimise the risk. So it is very important how you conduct yourself with your day-to-day -day life in there, albeit, you know, in that life that we've led. You know, people have died and people carry feelings. There's always going to be old scores to settle, depending on you and whether you're serious about your future when you're in there. You know, even in those gang situations, you know, if you want to change your life, having been in those gangs and everything, when you do get into prison and you want to change your ways and get back out and not be in them, then, you know, you do what you want to do regarding that. The message will get out there. I've never heard, you know, some people might see it as a weakness that you're changing to go on to better things in your life and not to, you know, uh, be making victims and, you know, getting involved in the real that kind of stuff uh, that can last forever if you don't get out of it early enough. Um, but them generally you can still be looked at as a kind of role model sometimes that if you could break the, the, the sequence of gangs and culture and, you know, you belong to this place and that place, but then others have seen you bad before, but then they see the change in you. Other gang members and other followers of those gangs and leaders uh, will see and feel that maybe they can just uh, turn their life around too, you know, and you can sometimes get even respect for that as well. So don't give up the fight. I hope I've answered the question for two of you this morning. Uh, and send in, send in loads of love. Might be, be up in a little while again. Uh, and yes, good day.